Well, hello, I'm Seth Worley, and today I'm going to show you how to create a Ghostbuster style proton stream using Trapcode Particular and Universe Ecto. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Worley, you've done this before. In a Red Giant film team experiment called Busted, that we all know and cherish and rewatch on a daily basis. And you're right. In that video, we recreated both the Proton Stream, giving it a more modern Iron Man slant with the tech, and the ghosts, but in the cartoonish style of the original films. It's actually one of my favorite film team experiments we ever did, and you should definitely go check it out. But a lot of cool new tools and abilities have become available to us since then, like Trapcode Particulars, new flocking simulations, and the universe tool Ecto, which we actually created as a direct result out of the process of making that film team experiment. So I thought it would be cool to explore a new way of creating these proton streams using some of this new stuff. Yeah, we can do more damage that way. Before we get started, though, I think it's important to understand exactly how the Ghostbusters Proton Pack works. Essentially, it's two components. The pack, also referred to as a charged particle accelerator, and the gun, also known as the neutrono wand. The pack functions by using a miniature cyclotron to concentrate protons by channeling through a positron collider, and then to the neutrono wand, emitting a wavefire positronic ionized stream of proton energy that polarizes with negatively charged ectoplasmic entities, holding them in the stream while active even if they're out of phase with reality. Now that we fully understand that and have zero questions, let's open up After Effects. First thing I want to do is open a new composition at 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to call it Proton Stream Comp. Then I'm going to create a new solid, and I'm going to call this solid Particular, because that's what's going on it. So let's add trap code Particular to that solid. And now, before I do anything, I'm going to go to the emitter settings, and I'm going to click this button that says Create Null, and then I'm going to also create a new null object. I'm going to call that target null. Okay, and we'll come back to all this later, but it's good to have it now. Oh, let's make that target null 3D. So, let's go to Trap Code Particular, and I'm going to click the Designer button, and it opens up this glorious designer for Particular. So, we're, I'm going to give you some specific settings to type here. So, in the emitter settings, I'm going to change the particles per second to 500. Then in the motion settings, I'm going to turn the velocity down to zero. And now you see when I move that around, it's not shooting particles anywhere. It's just leaving a trail of them. Uh, and v velocity from emitter motion, I'm going to turn that down to maybe five. And now it's not flinging particles everywhere as much as it was before. So now let's change some of those particle settings. Uh, I'm going to go and change the life to two seconds. The mass, let's turn that up to like 15. And uh, we're slowly starting to see some changes here. Let's go to the size rotation, turn the size down to, or up to like maybe six. Like, so just a little bit bigger than the default. Let's go to color, and I want the color of it to be red, just straight up red. And now we get to the fun stuff. So we got to do some simulation based stuff, but first we needed to give it some basic turbulence in the environment uh, tab down here. So I'm going to environment, turn up the effect position to, I mean, something like within the 700s. Now it's flying everywhere and that looks chaotic, but that's okay. Uh, our flocking simulation is going to create something cool. But first I do want to change the scale of the, the turbulence map that it's using. So I'm going to turn the scale down all the way to like two or three. And now, now it's a little more controlled. And now we'll change our evolution speed to, let me turn it up to something like 115, 116. And now we go into the simulations tab. This is the fun stuff. We're gonna turn on enable flocking. So now our particles are all flocking together like birds. So let's turn up the attract to 100, turn down separate to zero, turn up align to 100. And now we wanna give it a target position uh, to follow and we'll do that target, we'll 
we'll uh, parent that to the null that we made in a little bit. But for now, I'm going to turn up target attraction to 1000. And you'll see if I move this target position over, you see it starts flying from the emitter to the target position. And now if I bring it over here, it takes a while for it to notice where to flock. So I'm gonna have to go down here. I'm gonna turn up the maximum speed to 10,000. And I'm gonna change the range of view up to like, you know, within the 2000s. And then the field of view, instead of being 270, I'm just gonna set it to one times. And now it finds that target much quicker. You see wherever I put it, it finds that target and flocks to it. So now that we've got this, let's temporarily come out of particular, let's click apply, come out of the designer for a second. And I want to find that uh, target those target coordinates in the uh, flocking in the physics simulation section. And I'm going to parent those to the position uh, parameter of the target null. So you can all click it. I'm used to doing that, but it turns out, you know, we have these pick whips now. So I'll just drag that pick whip all the way up here to the position of the target null. And so particulars emitter will always follow the null that it created and it will, and the target uh, for our flocking will always stick to the target null. So if I drag my particular emitter uh, null over to the left and my target null over to the right and I hit play, you'll see it will start firing particles out from that left null and over toward that right null. Pretty neat. Okay, so now we want to add the blue lightning bolt stuff. And we're actually not gonna have to create a second uh, instance of particular. We can do that in the same instance of particular. So I go back into the designer and I'm actually going to duplicate this system. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm, I want it to inherit a whole lot of stuff from the original primary system. So first thing I'm gonna trash this emitter, this motion uh, settings. Uh, and I'm gonna turn off the primary system so I'm only looking at this duplicate. Let's go into the particle uh, type settings and I'm gonna change the particle feather down to zero. Then I'm gonna go into size and change the size down to three so it's much smaller and change the color to blue, straight up blue. Then I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna trash this environment setting so it inherits the settings from the primary. And I'm going to do the same thing with the simulations tab. So I want it to match and flow with the primary, uh, you know, core stream. Now I'm gonna open up fast physics, uh, the TF effect position, and I'm gonna turn that up to somewhere in the 100s, maybe 140 something. So now it's got its own turbulence field. It's staying within the turbulence field of the core, but it's uh, creating its own like turbulence for the lightning bolts and such. I'm gonna change the turbulence uh, TF scale in this to about 25, 26. Maybe adjust the effect position up a little bit to 11. You can mess with it to your liking. Then complexity, let's turn that up to 10, just because. Now evolution speed, I'm gonna turn that up to 125, because it's lightning, man. Lightning moves fast. Now if I turn the primary system back on, you can see that red and that blue are combining. Actually, you can't see the blue at all, so I'm gonna see if I can recolor this to be a little bit lighter, a little bit more readable, it's mostly readable. Once we start adding glows and stuff, you're really gonna see it. So I'm actually gonna then duplicate my bolts. And on this duplicate, I'm only gonna come over here into fast physics and I'm gonna offset the evolution so that it, so that the turbulence is happening at a different uh, point than the, system, than the system two bolts. So now I have two blue lightning bolts on this red core. So what's next, you ask? We need sparks coming off uh, these streams. So I'm gonna create a new system, but I'm gonna create it from scratch. I'm gonna click this little plus sign here, 
And let's go in and do some fun settings. First off in the emitter, I'm gonna change the emitter type to emit from parent systems. I'm gonna make the parent system primary and look at that, that's really cool looking, but it is overwhelming. Let's change our particles per second to 50. So now these particles are coming off of the stream. Uh, emit probability was turned down to 4%. So it's a little less overwhelming and a little more whelming. Let's go back, go, let's go to motion now. Turn up velocity to 150. Velocity from emitter motion, let's turn down to 10. So we're still getting it, but not as strong. Now let's go to particle type. Turn the life down to 1.5. And the life random, we want to turn up. So it's maybe like 50. So then it can, the sparks aren't all like in complete perfect unison. There still is a lot of unity happening here, but we'll take care of that. Size, let's change the size to two, super small. And size random. Change to 70. Now those are looking good. Uh, and I believe we want to do size over life. Um, we're going to want our spark to get smaller. We could do that in opacity, but I actually want to do it in the size. So um, in the presets of size over life, I'm going to click this very linear downward ramp curve. So now let's give these sparks some gravity. Um, over here in the physics section, I'm going to add a new environment block uh, for this sparks system. And I'm going to select the gravity down preset, named after my favorite Gerard Butler film. I'm going to turn the gravity up to 200. And now you can see these sparks are falling super naturally, or naturally, very naturally, and not super naturally, ghosts. So, a color, let's change the color. Let's change that over to like a yellow or an orange. I think orange looks good. Maybe we want to lean it a little toward the yellow, or we can start with the yellow and lean it toward orange. Guys, I don't know. I'm getting super nitpicky meticulous, but that looks very Ghostbusters-y, that yellow, blue, and red together. But let's lean it a little orange because can't have nice things. Okay, so now we made a particle stream with sparks and stuff. Now, before I forget, we definitely want to go over here and turn on motion blur for our particular layer. Now. This is fun. It looks super cartoony. So we're gonna need to add glow to this. Now on the busted film team experiment, I had a very specific process uh, for making the smoky glow around things like the ghosts and text. This is now my core ghost layer. Next, I duplicated him and cleared the adjustments on the duplicate so I could use it to create my glow effects. Started with a really intense fast blur. Then I used an effect from Red Giant Universe called Heat Wave, which turned my ghost blur into a mystical, spiritual, flowy blob. Then I added color vibrance. Then I duplicated the layer a few times to brighten it up and make it more intense. Then I blended everything together with a screen blend mode. That's a lot of work. And so when we were done with this film team experiment, I went to Harry Frank at Red Giant and said, hey, we should make a universe plugin uh, for making like ghosty, smoky glow stuff. And he said, let me see what I can do about it. And he did this about it. This is universe ecto, super awesome plugin that creates exactly what I needed in the Ghostbusters film team experiment. So let me show you how it works. You just click it and drag it and drop it onto the layer. And now it is a ghost. So here's the thing. We could just drop this onto our particular layer. Um, and we could go in and change the color settings to, you know, glow color from source all the way up to 100. So it's generating that glow from the source. And that looks cool. 100%. That said, though, I want to make it more complicated because I'm me and I like me. So I'm going to duplicate particular. Uh, I'm going to duplicate it three times and I'm going to turn off that bottom one and say so I have the original settings down there on the bottom saved. Now I'm going to go to the first one and I'm going to rename it core. I'm going to turn off the others. So I'm just looking at that one. And I'm going to go into show systems and I'm going to turn off systems two through four leaving only the core and nothing more. I'm sorry. So now let's drop Ecto onto this core layer. 
And we're going to go through and change some very specific settings here uh, to get it looking the way we want it to look. I'm going to start by turning distort source off down to zero so it doesn't distort my actual particular layer. I'm going to turn on Preserve Luma, and I'm going to be honest, I do that mostly out of superstition. I don't know why I do it. Glow Intensity, let's turn that up to maybe 1.6, something like that. And now Distortion, let's change from 50 to something like 10. And let's uh, change the size to 10 as well. And then let's change our colors. I'm going to intentionally make this inner color an orange and the outer color a red, straight up red. That looks cool. So now let's go to glow settings and I'm going to change inner intensity. I'm going to turn that all the way down to zero for this core stream. And then let's go down to distortion settings, change our pattern to electric because it's electric. So that looks pretty cool. So now let's do the same thing to our bolts. Uh, I'm going to turn off the core layer, go to this uh, particular layer above it, change the name to bolts and turn it the heck on. And now I'm going to go up to particular. I'm going to turn off the primary system and system four. So I only leave my bolts. And I'm going to add Universe Ecto. Now, once again, we're going to go in here and make some very specific changes. Starting with turning off Distort Source, turning that down to zero. I'm going to change Distortion, turn it up to 75. The size, I'm going to change from 30 to 85. I like the colors that I'm working with there, the cool colors. So I'm going to go into Glow Settings. And I'm going to turn contrast up to 75. Outer thickness, turn it up to about 1.25. Noise, I'm going to set to 20. Then in distortion settings, I'm going to change that to electric. Because it too is electric. Let's change that distortion setting scale from 75. Turn it up to something like 85, 84. 84.9. Then we'll go to animation, turn the flow to something like 20, 15, 17. And look at that, we did it once again. So next, obviously, we want to turn that off and go to this particular layer above it, rename it Sparks, turn it on, go up to particular to show systems and turn off the primary system, system two and system three, leaving all of the sparks. Apply universe ecto, and this one's the easiest. I'm literally gonna go up here and just click choose preset, and I get to see all these awesome ecto presets, and I'm just gonna pick the one called flames. And that's it, it's done. So now we just need to turn all the layers back on together. I'm gonna change their blend mode to screen, so they all blend together real well. And that's how we make a proton stream. Now, that's not it. There's also another cool thing you can do. I can add a solid and call it wall and make that solid 3D. And then I'm gonna, actually let's change the color of it so we can definitely tell what it is and where it is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rotate it so that it is basically standing in between the emitter and the target null. And then if I go into particular and I navigate down to the simulations, I find bounce and I enable bounce. And then I'm going to set my bounce layer one to my wall layer. And you'll see now this stream will hit the wall and particles will bounce off of the wall. So for these particles, I'm going to set the collision event one to kill so that the particles will die the second they hit the wall and be no more. But what I do want to happen when the stream hits the wall is I want the 
sparks to happen. So I'm actually going to do a little thingamajig. I'm going to open up the designer. And I'm going to duplicate system four, which are the sparks system. I'm going to go to emitter type. And I'm actually going to leave that there. I'm going to change emitter from parent behavior to emit at parent end of life, the darkest setting in all of particular. And so now those sparks hit the second that their parent dies. Uh, I'm going to turn up velocity. So the sparks are flying up all up everywhere. I'm going to actually give them their own uh, bounce uh, simulation, setting the bounce layer one to wall. So those sparks are bouncing off of that wall layer as well. And now I have awesome sparks that hit uh, the second that the stream hits this wall layer. Now, what can this look like in practice? Well, you can camera track a scene and lay solids down where floors or walls are, set those to be bounce layers, and create some really freaking cool effects. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Well, that wasn't such a chore, now, was it?